Hey everyone, it's Tammy Clark here. I'm gonna give everyone just a couple minutes to jump on. Uh, I know I put it out there that we were gonna go live at eight, um, and so I just wanna give people a little bit of time to jump on. I know it's Saturday, it's the weekend, people are probably busy, so I just wanna give people a couple minutes to jump on. Um, it was a lot of fun last night. I'm sure a lot of you were at the Grand Haven Freedom Fest last night, and we have a lot to talk about about that, and I kinda of wanna pick up where I left off. That's the point of doing this live tonight. So I'm just going to give people a couple minutes to jump on. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Conrad. Uh, hey, Michael. Lisa. I see people jumping on here. So, um, all right. Awesome. Cindy. All right. Sounds good. So it looks like a bunch of you are, are on and um, I can get started here. So first of all, happy Saturday. Happy weekend. For me personally, this is a makeup free t-shirt kind of weekend. And uh, after last night, ooh, I'm pooped. It's been a busy couple of weeks planning the Freedom Fest at Ann Getty, uh, the Freedom Fest in Grand Haven last night. I know a lot of you were there. It was so much fun. Oh my gosh. I got to sleep in this morning and recover a little bit. And uh, I, I just really felt on my heart. <laughs> hey, Jeff, I, I see the comment and you and I are going to pick up where we left off on that conversation. Um, but I just really felt on my heart that I needed to finish the conversation and the message that I started delivering last night about fear. Um, and as I was praying yesterday, I started, for those of you that weren't there, Grand Haven was amazing. I know some of you have seen the videos and some of you have been watching virtually, um, but it was unbelievable. I did get some of the numbers back and uh, there were a lot more people than we anticipated that ended up parking it there. The signatures, oh my gosh, thousands and thousands of signatures. Thousands were turned in, thousands were picked up, and we are on a roll, you guys. Uh, the amount of people that were there, the energy, it was just amazing. It was really, to be honest with you, it was a God thing. And I think we've started a revival. I think we've wakened uh, the sleeping giant. And so I just felt on my heart all morning to pick up where I left off last night because we got interrupted. And for those of you that weren't there, we were told we had to shut it down. Um, the police came and they were, they they were awesome. They were very supportive. I had been in communication with them even weeks before the event and just letting them know who we were and that we were coming in and, you know, what we were all about and we're a Blue Lives Matter supporting organization. And so we really wanted uh, to honor them and to have their participation. And um, so we were in close communication with the police throughout the whole thing. But when we, um, you know, we had no idea of knowing how many people were going to come. And when when the police saw that there was, the stadium was just packed. And I think I was told there were thousands of people that ended up staying. So when we were notified by the police that we had to shut it down, I only could get about five minutes, if that, um, out of the message that the Lord had laid on my heart to share with the whole group. So that's okay. We're just going to pick up where we left off last night because I think this is a really important topic that um, every one of us as families are struggling with. And, and I think that all of us as a whole, as a community, as a body of Christ. And even if you're not a believer and you're watching, um, that's okay. It's it's not about being Christian or not Christian. It's not about bipartisan or anything like that. It's just something that we're all dealing with and struggling with. And so as I was praying over the event yesterday and getting ready uh, to head to Grand Haven, I was praying for everybody who was traveling. I, I met people from Detroit, from the other side of the state, from uh, the Upper Peninsula. I met people from all over the state who traveled in and, and thank us for putting this together. It was just so powerful. Uh, thanks me personally for sharing what I did about fear. And so that's why today as, as I woke up, I knew I needed to finish what the Lord laid on my heart. So basically what he told me as I was preparing yesterday and just praying over everyone in the event, I prayed for safety, for angels to be around all of us and, and protecting um, all of those that were traveling and those that were speaking. I really felt the Lord impress upon my heart about fear. And I'm not a fearful person by nature. I'm pretty fearless. My mom will tell you, even as a nine, 10 month old toddler running around, I mean, yes, I was actually running that early. Um, I'd run off of a cliff. I just had no fear. And I've never had fear. Uh, I, I'm just a very bold person by nature. And of course, that's just a personality thing. Um, but I will give you guys a little bit of a secret. I will, I will share with you the one thing that I'm afraid of, and that's spiders. The only thing I'm afraid of in this world. I mean, people don't scare me. Celebrities don't scare me. But spiders scare me. So anyway, um, as I was thinking about this, and I see a lot of you saying me too. <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's a common thing. But anyway, um, the whole fear thing has really gripped this nation and it is paralyzing us. It's paralyzing us as families, as employees, 
as believers. And so it was one of those things that I just felt the Lord really impressed on me to share with everybody. So let's get into this whole thing about fear. What is going on in this country? What has gripped this nation? Those of you who watch the frontline doctors stand up and they keep getting taken down. These are the frontline doctors who are out there treating patients. These are not, you know, doctors behind the scenes. These are doctors treating COVID patients. And every time they speak, they keep getting taken down. Even their website was shut down, which was private. I mean, it just is shocking and it should tell you what is really going on behind the scenes, right? And so they even addressed what they called the spider web of fear, which of course to me, yes, spiders, yucky, right? Scary. But the spider web of fear that has gripped this nation is to me scarier than anything because the one way that you can lock down a country and you can control people is through fear. And so I just really felt the Lord wanting me to address that with everybody and to just give you an encouraging word from the scripture. If you're not a believer, that's okay. Just, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, just take the message as a positive and encouraging message, maybe, um, because it is something that every one of us can benefit from. Even if you're not a believer and you don't believe in the scriptures, that's fine. The message to fear not is something that we should all embrace because you are never going to be successful in this life if you live a fearful life. Let's just be honest, right? If you're the person cowering in the back and you can't get up and speak and you can't get up and deliver a message, and, and it's, I'm not saying that you have to have the personality that enjoys that. I'm just saying if you can't master your fears and if you're somebody who gives into fear your whole life, you won't be successful. That's just the way that it is. So this fear that is being promulgated in this country is paralyzing people. And it's so bad on so many levels. And so let me just share with you what the Lord laid on my heart um, for our group, for our Stand Up Michigan group, okay? So let's just start with a couple of definitions. First of all, fear from the Oxford definition, okay? The traditional sense of fear is the unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous to you. It's likely to cause pain or harm or it is a threat to you. Okay, so what's been happening today with everything we, we've been, we have been told and we are being told, right? Everyone around us is a threat to us. And we are now policing each other, yelling at each other. You don't have a mask on. You're a threat to me. Uh, where, what are you doing going out in public without your mask, right? And so this, this fear has really gripped the whole country. And we have now become afraid of our neighbors, of our uh, even relatives that don't live in our home and those of us those in our communities when we go to grocery stores and things like that we're terrified of everybody because they're a threat to us that is the traditional definition of fear and this agenda has been very successful in promulgating and even enticing the spirit of fear over this nation because you know what the bible says that fear is a spirit now i'm a believer and so i believe in that uh, biblical worldview. If you don't, that's okay. Take it for what it is. You don't have to listen and you don't have to agree. I'm not trying to be a preacher here. I'm tr what I'm trying to do is, in is give you guys the encouragement and the inspiration to fear not so that you can stand up. I'm trying to empower you to get over that hurdle of fear that the government and the global powers that be have collaboratively been successful in implementing over this whole country and really over the world. So it's important that you understand fear is a spirit. From the biblical definition, the Bible says in Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Okay, so we know that fear is a spirit. And if we understand that, then we understand where this is coming from and why this is so important from a biblical worldview and perspective. Okay, so what is the biblical definition of fear? The biblical definition of fear basically says that fear of God refers to a specific sense of respect, awe, and submission to our God or to a deity. We know that's our God. So that's the biblical definition of fear. It's not fear as in one hiding and cowering in the corner. It is fear that's a healthy respect and reverence for our God. Okay, so let's understand the two different the two different different definitions there. Okay, so what is happening here with this fear that has gripped this nation? Because we need to address it. If you don't address the problem, you can't fix and correct the problem. You'll never be able to overcome it. So we need to address the elephant in the room. And that is the fear that is being intentionally cultivated and intentionally summoned 
by the powers that be, I, I will be very honest with you, that are wicked in high places today. And the Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about the, the, the nations fear and tremble and groan in misery when wicked, when the wicked rule. But the Bible also says when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. There's freedom. And what are we doing at Stand Up Michigan? We are celebrating our freedoms. Well, the problem that we have today is that there's a lot of wickedness behind the scenes, and that's why fear is being promulgated. And I'm going to address that. How do we know this is wicked? Wicked, Because I know some of you watching will say, oh, here we go, conspiracy theories, right? I'm telling you what, it is not a conspiracy theory. It is out there today. This is no conspiracy theory. This is a full-blown conspiracy against the United States against traditional American values, against our free enterprise and our free economic system. It is a full-blown conspiracy. It's not a theory. It's all out there. You got to have your, your head stuck in the sand to think that it's a theory, right? So I'm going to address this because we have to acknowledge it in order to defeat it. We can't defeat something that we don't even exist or we don't recognize exists, right? So that's why I'm addressing this, and that's why I feel the Lord really put this on my heart to bring this message to our followers, because we've got to take it to the next level, and I want to empower you guys to stand up, okay? All right, so what is happening today with our children and our young adults in particular? This is where my heart is heavy, because I have um, one who is, uh, my son is going into high school, and I have a daughter who is college age. And then I have another daughter who's just had a baby, and of course she's been really afraid because who knows what to think about this virus, right? And so I'm dealing with it within my own family, and this is why my heart is so heavy for all of you, because if I'm dealing with this, I'm a mom. I'm just a mom like y'all are, a parent like y'all are, and I know if I'm dealing with it, so are you. All right, so what is going on today with our children in particular and our young adults is that they are being really pummeled with this fear because they don't know what to expect. They're all going back to school or college and they're all being told that they have to mask up. And they, there's a very high level of anxiety with that because they don't want to wear masks, nor should they. It's not healthy. You guys have seen my videos on that. As an environmental health safety professional, a PPE expert, you know exactly what I'm talking about with this and I'm not gonna get sidetracked with that. But I'm gonna just focus on the fact that the anxiety levels are very high for kids going back to school uh, college kids going back to school, they've got to get COVID tests just to go to school. Like, what's the point of that? They don't get flu tests. So why would they have to get a COVID test, right? But it is what it is. The point is that they're also feeling like, and I had an evening with my son and it was really kind of sad. And this is what really opened my eyes to some of this is that uh, we had an evening where there was a lot of tears with my son. And he just he kind of locked himself in the bathroom and, you know, we had to work through it. And I know, this is why I know you guys are going through the same things with your own kids. Because he said, Mom, if I can't even go to high school and have a normal high school life, like, that's like just normal. That's what all kids are supposed to be able to do. Then how am I ever going to have a normal life? And so the enemy has been very successful in stressing us out to the max, giving us anxiety through the roof, and nobody knows what to do or how to handle it. And I know these kids are terrified. And some kids are just downright resistant. Some kids are, they're just, they're not confrontational by nature. So they're just going to put the mask on and they're going to have a difficult time with headaches and feeling nauseated and things like that. And so we all know this. We are less than a month away going back to school. And, and so I want to just address a couple of things with you to empower you to find your voice and stand up. And if you're one of those people that's having a hard time doing that. And I heard from several people last night who came up and hugged me and just said, thank you so much for what you're doing. I've never been somebody who could stand up for myself. I've never been able to find my voice, but you have helped me to do that. Because of you, I've been able to find my voice. So the the young people in particular, and this was the focus of my mask um, uh, video that I did as well, are a huge concern to me. Because if the devil is successful in getting them to be afraid, he is successful at paralyzing an entire generation of future leaders. And we cannot have our kids being afraid. We shouldn't be afraid. I know we are, as adults, are struggling with it ourselves. But we've got to recognize what is going on here through fear. Okay? So, we, we are being taught to fear others. We are being taught that people are to be feared. We are afraid of hugs. We are afraid of handshakes. I still have people come when I go in for the hug because I'm a hugger. 
I put my arms out big like, hey, bring it in. And I still have people go, right? Um, and you know, every time I do a video, I always tell people my green bracelet means handshakes and hugs, right? But there are so many people who are afraid and they want to do the fist bump or the elbow bump or whatever. I just want to roll my eyes, but I try to be gracious and, and it's just where they're at. Okay. I get it. <laughs> but we are being taught that people are to be feared. We should never be afraid to hug people. Think about it. I mean, we should never be afraid to shake somebody's hand. You know, the right hand of friendship is a Christian symbol. That's, what the, that's where the handshake originated from. The right hand of fellowship is a Christian symbol of brotherhood. And now we're all afraid to shake hands. Now we're all afraid to hug each other. That is a problem because we are isolating from each other and we are being taught and conditioned to look at each other with suspicion and hate and fear. So this needs to be addressed. And you guys have got to understand what's going on here behind the scenes so that you can stand up. You can find your voice and you can stand up. Um, it is not normal, it is not natural to fear life, to fear living. Let me just put this out there for you. As somebody who has studied medicine, it is on any given day very likely that you are going to come into contact with millions of pathogens, millions, viruses, bacteria, pathogens, all kinds of stuff. When you get on public transportation on a bus, train, in the, you're in the grocery store, we're all breathing in each other's stuff. That is not something we should be afraid of. In fact, that is exactly what keeps our immune systems functioning at a very high level. The worst thing that we can do is isolate ourselves from each other, put the mask on, and never come into uh, contact with each other and interact with other people. Because all that will do is tell your immune system that it can go on vacation and it will take a break. And then your immune system will plummet. Your immune system function will plummet. And then when you do come into contact with other people, you get everything because your immune system is not functioning. So this is not natural to be taught to fear other people, to be afraid of shaking hands, to be afraid of hugging. There's viruses and pathogens out there all the time. And some are very serious. But guess what? Once they're introduced into society, none of us are going to escape it. <laughs> I love that. Hugs to you. Hugs to you guys too. Thank you. But none of us get to escape this, guys. Corona, this coronavirus is here, this COVID-19. It is a novel virus. And I, if you've ever watched my mask videos, you've heard me talk about that. This is a novel virus, which means it's a new strain of coronavirus. But all that means is it's, it's going to sweep through the entire country. None of us get to escape it. So this whole thought that we need to stay away from each other, put our masks on to prevent people from getting it is ridiculous. We're all going to come into contact with it at some point. So the best thing that you can do is boost your immune system, keep it up there, and then when you do come into contact with it, your immune system will be able to defeat it. No big deal. All right? So it's very important that we understand that, first of all. We don't need to run and hide in fear. Now, if you're somebody that is immunocompromised, you should be maybe isolating yourself just like in any other situation, right? But we don't quarantine an entire society because there's a virus on the loose. We're not gonna control the virus. It is gonna sweep through this entire country. There's nothing we can do about it. So the best thing that we can do is create herd immunity very quickly. And I'll tell you, we shouldn't be afraid of it, okay? So take the mask off, go about your business, keep your immune system strong, and no big deal, no worries. Again, remember, we are getting more and more of these positive tests for a couple of reasons. One is that 85% of people that are testing positive right now are 100% asymptomatic. Let me explain to you what asymptomatic means. It means their viral load is so low that their immune system is functioning at a really high level up here and the viral load is way down here. So their immune system is suppressing the virus so much so that they don't even have any symptoms. So what's the big flipping deal? Really, think about it. Who cares? So you get the COVID. It's no different than coming into contact with a cold or a flu or anything else. Because if your immune system is functioning as it should be, it is no big deal. It is no problem. Your immune system will suppress it. Now, there are a few who have underlying health conditions and maybe are immunocompromised that, yeah, they're going to struggle with it. But guess what, guys? That's life. They're going to struggle with anything else with flu or any other virus they come into contact with. This is normal. This is not a fearful situation. This is natural. So I want you to understand this so that you can understand that this agenda of fear that's being promulgated is not right. So 
uh, let's just talk about um, some of the things that we have gone through with this COVID that has kind of brought us to this point. I So first of all, I've never been a person uh, that struggles with depression, but this whole isolation from each other, shut down all of that for months and months, I actually struggled with depression a little bit. And that's how I started following Stand Up Michigan. And it was actually really something, uh, Stand Up Michigan was a group that really kind of helped me through it. And I've talked to many of you out there who you had had the same experience, right? It was just not normal. It's not natural. It's not normal to be shut down and quarantined and, and isolated from each other for this long. And then the fear, right? The agenda of fear started. And so there was a lot of depression and we know that. And, and so this is exactly how I got involved in this group to begin with. But I just want you to understand that being told to live life, el trying to eliminate all risk is not normal. It's not natural. We can never eliminate risk from our lives. Every time you get in your car, there's a risk you could get in a car accident. Every time you fly in an airplane, every time you go to work, any, whatever you're doing, there is risk in life and we're never going to eliminate risk. You need to understand that because what's going on is we are being told to mask up, to suit up, to put the face shield on. And now what's the latest? The goggles, right? We are being told to run around and live life li literally with this crazy amount of PPE on because of a virus that's out there. That's not normal. You can never, ever escape risk in life. So let's just leave it at that and move on to some scriptures. Okay, because like I said, I am I am really speaking to those of you out there who have a biblical worldview within our group, and I want to encourage you from the scriptures. So let's talk about some scriptures that address fear. First of all, Isaiah 41.10. It starts out by saying, fear not. Fear not. I am with you. Be not dismayed. How many of us have been dismayed? I'll tell you, there was probably about four weeks that I really struggled with depression and I was really discouraged. And I was, I, I just felt like we're losing our country. There's no hope. And, and that's not godly to think that way, but this was very serious. What we all went through was very mentally and emotionally um, unhealthy, right? So, I had to really go back and rely on the scriptures to encourage me. And Isaiah 41.10 was one that really kind of helped me to get through it because it starts out by saying, fear not, be not dismayed. What are you worried about? I'm with you. The Lord says, I'm with you. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you and I will uphold you. Now let's stop and think about that. Fear not. What are we being told by our government? Be afraid, stay away, hide, mask up, goggle up, everything, right? The Bible's telling us, don't be afraid. I'm with you. I'm the Lord. I'm your God. I'm your healer. All right, those are two very, very contradictory conversations. And they're coming at us. One's coming at us from scripture. One is coming at us from our government. And so it's leaving us all in this place where we don't know what to do. I'm watching pastors really struggle with us. We don't know what to do. All right, let's keep going. This agenda of fear. Why, are, why is the government really promoting such an agenda of fear when it's not realistic anymore because the numbers don't reflect it. First, you got to remember where this started. None of us really knew what was going on in the beginning, right? So for the first two weeks, we shut everything down because we didn't know what was happening. Oh, all right. I think we all agreed that was probably the right thing to do. After week three and week four and week five, we started having these conversations about extending the shutdowns because it was all about not overwhelming the hospitals, which we all agreed was probably a good thing. But then it was about flatten the curve. So we did not overwhelm the hospitals. Then we flattened the curve. And then it was about cases and deaths. And now the deaths are way down. The only people that are really dying now are the elderly and the immunocompromised. And oh, that's because we're actually putting COVID patients in nursing homes. And so what are we left to talk about now? Cases. Well, the cases are being inflated, and we know this by the doctors and nurses who are telling us. I mean, they're coming out in droves telling us we're being told to mark all these deaths as COVID because we get more money from the government. We're also testing more positive because we have more herd immunity. People out there have been exposed. 85% of people that are being tested positive don't even know they have it. So yes, the numbers are up. That's a good thing. We should be celebrating that because it means we're reaching herd immunity. Big deal. That's great. But the cases are up. So now we're still focusing on cases. And now we go into lockdown mode even harder, even more. We're being masked up now even more. It doesn't make any sense. So you guys need to understand that this agenda of fear is designed to weaken you. 
The Bible says, let me read again, Isaiah 41, 10. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you. Okay, so the Bible says, fear not, I will strengthen you. The government says, be afraid, mask up, be, stay away from everybody and, and be afraid. Why is that? Because fear weakens you. When you are weak, you are not effective. You are not powerful and you do not have a voice and you cannot stand up. Think about it. So it's really important that you understand what fear does to you and why the Bible clearly says so many times, do not fear. If you are living in fear, you are weak, you are powerless, you don't have a voice, and you don't have any legs to stand on. So I just want to encourage you and empower you guys in the Lord. Don't be afraid. What you're hearing is based on an agenda that the facts and the science and the data does not support. In fact, the facts, the science, and the data support quite the opposite. We are on the downhill slide from this thing. We should be like living life as normal, no big deal. But now we're being scrutinized and we're being, we're being, the screws are putting, you know, being tightened and we're being told to do even more. And it makes no sense. And nobody is giving any explanation. So um, I also just want to uh, just encourage you that we should never, okay, this is one thing that's really frustrated me. And I'm sure some of you have seen this. My kids go to a Christian school or my son. They just released their back to school program. And I know a lot of you are going to relate to this. Their back to school plan. And it is to mask up. All the kids are going to be in masks, all the teachers. Of course, I was so irritated when I saw that, right? So we're still working through that ourselves. But what really, yeah, that's good, Amy. Fear. False evidence appearing real. That's exactly right. But what really, really irritated me about the school opening up again with a mask is that they actually said it's the Christian thing to do. Out of love and respect for our brethren, we should put a mask on so that we don't make them afraid. I'm telling you what, my blood was boiling when I read that. That is totally contrary to God's word. How do I know that? Because we don't take an approach that is weak out of fear. Fear of man, fear of being sued, fear of what somebody might say, right? And the repercussions that might come. And so we take that approach and we say it's the Christian thing to do when the Bible clearly says, do not fear. Now, I, I, have to just, I have to just stop and address this a minute because how do you know what the godly thing to do is? How do you know? Well, the Bible says, do not fear. The Bible says, submit to those in authority. But it also says, never to submit ourselves to anything that is not godly or goes against God's word. So I addressed this with my son's school. I mean, I hit him hard with it. And I said, how dare you say that this is the Christian thing to do when the Bible clearly says we are to fear not and we are not to submit ourselves to anything that goes against God's word that is contrary. So, I mean, come on, let's think about this. All right, so let's move on because I've, I've said enough about that and you guys are all dealing with your own school things. Um, but what is this agenda designed to do? It's designed to keep us subservient. And we should never submit to fear. We should never submit to agendas that are deceptive, untruthful, and fearful. Okay, there's an agenda behind this. And it's designed to keep you afraid. Because if you're afraid, you're weak. You've lost your voice. You've given up your power. And you certainly don't have legs to stand on. All right, so fear makes you scared. It makes you defenseless. It makes you untrusting. And it also pulls you into that whole agenda of now policing each other and and being afraid of other people and telling them to be afraid and I mean it's this whole thing and and so they've gotten us to the point where we're all doing that so I, I know a lot of you are homeschooling I know a lot of you are pulling the kids out of school uh, but there are a whole lot of parents like me that it, you know I am actually looking at that myself and I'm not actually settled on what I'm going to do yet based on whether or not my son's school rescinds that rule or they allow him to wear a mesh mask or they allow me to use the medical waiver. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen here. But because the anxiety levels are very high, I wanted to address this, this agenda of fear because we're all, I think it's kind of culminating right now because school is just getting ready to start. Um, so these mandates, I will tell you, these government mandates cannot be effective unless we are all so weak and scared that we don't have a voice. So they're designed to keep you weak and scared and afraid. They're designed to make you powerless. The only way that we're all gonna go along with these agendas is if we are scared enough to do so. 
And that's where I'm seeing a lot of pastors and a lot of businesses. They're so afraid of the government. They're so afraid of being sued. They're so afraid that somebody might get angry and say something that they're just cowering in the corner and they won't stand up and open up. And that's so wrong. What are we afraid of? Think about it. The only thing to fear about this whole agenda is fear itself. And I think the only thing that our governor is afraid of is the truth, because that's the only virus circulating out there that she cannot control. It's the truth and it's coming out. And so you guys need to need to share this video. You need to share this. You need to speak up and stand up. That's what Stand Up Michigan is for. It is a platform to empower you to stand up because enough is enough. And our being being, you know, deprived of our freedoms is not okay. The Constitution of the United States does not cease to exist just because there is a pandemic, just because there's a new virus in town, right? So we need to understand that and we need to move forward as, as parents, as citizens, demanding truth, demanding um, exposure, demanding that the facts be come out. And, and that's what we've been doing with Stand Up Michigan, working behind the scenes with the legislature. So stay tuned because there's more to come on that. All right, I want to get into a couple more scriptures here. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Think about that. Power. Okay, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit. And we are not to submit ourselves to anything, any demonic spirit, anything that's unbiblical. But he's given us a spirit of, of power and boldness and courage. And that's what Stand Up Michigan is. We've all found our courage. We've all found our voice because we've had enough. But let me ask you something. The Bible also says love. So we are to love our neighbors. And I get that. Everybody's at a different place. I don't judge anyone if they're wearing a mask. I really don't. Everybody's at a different place. Maybe they're immunocompromised. Maybe they just don't feel comfortable, um, you know, going out without a mask. And that's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. That's fine. If you want to wear a mask and you feel better for wearing a mask, wear a mask. I love you the way you are. I love you on your journey. Uh, we're all at a different place in our journey of faith, and that's totally fine. However, the last thing the, Bible, the scripture talks about, God has given us a spirit of power. He's given us a spirit of love, and he's given us a spirit of a sound mind. Now, let me just ask you, does this look like a sound mind to you? Because this is what your government wants you to do. We are being told that we need to go back to work and school in cold and flu season just like this. Does this look like a sound mind to you? What rational person is going to walk around in the community with goggles and a full face mask? Oh, and some face shield just to go to the store, just to go to school. Think about this. What the heck? Is that a sound mind? No. That's insane. I really want you to stop and think about this, guys, because it's gone off the rails crazy train because of the virus. All right. So I want to leave you with this. And you may need to now. Now I have crazy ski goggle here. <laughs> it's all right. Um, I want to leave you with this. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid. Neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you and fights for you. That's from Joshua. Be not afraid. Be not dismayed. The Lord your God is with you and he fights for you. So I know this is, is nerve wracking. I know we're getting back, you know, having to go back to school and we don't know what to do. I would tell you guys, get creative. I had my mother-in-law make my son a mask that is cloth all around the edges and it's mesh right here. So you can clearly see his cute little smiling face and he can breathe and it's not a big deal, but it's a mask. So I would encourage you to get creative, get with the Lord, talk to your kids, tell them, don't be afraid. Let's get on top of this. Let's stay in control. Let's be proactive and do as much as we can and pray our way through it because the Lord will give you creative solutions. Let me just um, leave you with the story of Gideon because it's one of the most creative stories I've ever heard and only God. This is what God will do for you. <laughs> I love that, Marilee. Thank you. All right. So the story of Gideon, Gideon is the reluctant warrior, Okay. Gideon did not want to do what the Lord asked him to do. He was afraid. He was a leader in Israel, but he was afraid. And the Lord had told him that he wanted, he wanted Gideon to go fight the Midianites who had been oppressing his family and his people for years. So Gideon was very nervous. He was very untrusting. He questioned God. God proved it to him 
through the, the fleece. If you guys aren't sure of the story, you can go look it up yourselves. But he overcame his doubt and he found his voice. He found his legs and he stood up. And when he did, the Lord helped him to overcome an army of thousands, tens of thousands, with literally 300 men. It was the most unique approach to winning a war. But my point is in all of this is Google is censoring us. Facebook is shutting us down. YouTube is censoring us. How are we, it's little Stand Up Michigan group, how are we going to overcome these giants? But I'm telling you, if we all get our courage on, if we all get the fear out of the way, just rebuke that spirit of fear, get away from me in Jesus' name. I am not going to be afraid because my God is with me and he is creative and he will give me solutions and he will help me overcome. And collectively, there is strength in numbers. And when we do this as an organization, we will rise. I, what I saw last night in Grand Haven was the beginning of a revival. There is revival on the horizon and he is using us. He's using our voices and our bodies. And that's what I've prayed all along. Lord, this isn't about me. This isn't about Ron or Garrett or Tony or any of the, you know, admins or mods behind the scenes. It's not about any of us individually. It is about furthering God's kingdom on this earth to see his purposes fulfilled. And he is beginning with Stand Up Michigan. We are watching a revival in the making. So Gideon, even though he was reluctant, he trusted God. He overcame his doubts and he, he, followed God's crazy plan, which was to give all of his men a torch, cover it with um, a pottery, like a bowl basically upside down, sneak in on the enemy in the middle of the night, and then blow the trumpet and yell for the sword of the Lord and of Gideon too. Break the pottery. They saw the torches in the middle of the night. The thousands, the army, the tens of thousands were afraid and they were disoriented. There was confusion among them. They all killed each other. And God literally allowed that little army of 300 men to overcome tens of thousands of Midianites that had been suppressing Israel for years and years and years. All because Gideon trusted. It was a crazy plan, but he trusted. And he was the reluctant warrior. But because he overcame his fear and he literally rose and rose to the challenge with pure trust in the Lord and unafraid, the Lord used something really crazy and small to defeat that huge army. So I, when I sit, step back and I think about it and I say, Lord, how are we going to do this? How can we possibly overcome the government, Google, Facebook? The Lord reminds me of that story of Gideon and of David and Goliath all the time. It's, you know why, guys? When you, get the, when you get rid of the fear, a righteous anger starts to rise up in you. It is a righteous anger. And that's what David had. He heard Goliath the giant slandering his God and his family. And he had a righteous anger rise up inside of him. And the Holy Spirit took over. And not only did he kill the giant, he cut the giant's head off. And that's where we're going. So I'm encouraging you to encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible says, encourage yourself in the Lord. That means you get into the scriptures. You let your righteous anger come out. You encourage yourself in the Lord. And be prepared for the fight. Because it is still a fight. Right? But the Lord can do amazing things through those who are courageous and bold and who are unafraid. So that's the first thing that we have to address is the fear. We don't need to be afraid. The kingdom of God on earth is internal. And we are to live from a place of peace at all times. Let it rage around you. Who cares? God is our provider. God is our protector. And when we do not fear and we trust him, we will accomplish amazing things. And you watch. We are watching the beginnings of a revival happening right now. The church is waking up. The fear is being addressed. The fear of man, the fear of government, it is being addressed. The Lord is dealing with it. And we are going to do things and go places because the United States of America has a purpose. And we're going to watch. We're going to be part of fulfilling America's purpose. So I just wanted to encourage you guys. I just wanted to get with you and finish what the word that God gave me. And just because it's kind of cool, actually, that I was able to do it this way because I never would have been able to expound on it in this, this amount of time and depth like I can with a live. So it's, it's something that I've just had on my heart. And I know if I'm struggling with it and my family is struggling with it, I know that you are too. So be encouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Get into the scriptures and fear not and go get it. He's going to do great things through us collectively. I love being a part of, you, of the group and having you all as family and friends. And I look forward to seeing, uh, seeing you again at our next Freedom Fest. We're going to be putting that out tomorrow, uh, the date and the location. So stay tuned. Love you guys. See ya.